Welcome back. We're in Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, looking today at section 5.3 in chapter 5, the verb Amy, I am. Now, quick heads up, there is a typo in this section. Hang on in there and I'll show you in a couple of minutes time where it is. It's in this table, this important table in the middle of page 57. There's a mistake and I'm going to show you what it is. But in a moment, I'll do that in a moment. Before that, let's just think for a second why we need to be looking at the verb Amy, I am, in a chapter on adjectives. The answer is, of course, that we need the verb to be or I am, you are, he, she, or it is, and so on, in order to use adjectives predicatively, like in sentences such as, the woman is wise. The woman is wise. We're predicating in that sentence, wiseness, wisdom, that adjective of the woman, and we do that with the verb is. So we need to know how to, how to write the verb uh, to be, at least in the basic present indicative active form, and that's what section 5.3 gives us. The verb is Amy. And here is the table, right there in the middle of verse of page 57, complete with the mistake. So see if you can spot it. If you've read down to the bottom of page 57, you will have spotted it already. Amy, a, estin, esmen, ester, asin. Let me point out a couple of things about this table before showing you the, the mistake in it. First, you'll notice that um, you've got a couple of news at the end of the third person singular and plural, which are in brackets, that's because they're optional. They tend to appear when the word following begins with uh, a vowel, and they tend to be absent when the word following begins with a consonant. That may not be an absolute rule, but it tends to be followed, and it accounts for why they're there. Este or estin, ace or asin are both completely normal, completely regular, shouldn't surprise you, regular in the sense of as regular as this gets, and shouldn't surprise you, you should be ready to account for all of them. The second thing to notice is, and this is the bad news you've already spotted, this looks pretty unfamiliar. If you have been diligently learning your luo, luo, luais, luai, luomen, lueta, luusin, and so on, you will be pretty dismayed to discover that Amy A. Estin doesn't look much like that. However, if you've been paying really close attention, you might notice, as Duff points out, that the endings in the plural are not entirely dissimilar from the endings of luo in the plural. Luo, luois, lue, well that's all pretty different. Luomen. Luomen. Luete. And lu-usin. Again, with the movable new, they're not entirely dissimilar, are they? And that might help you as you're trying to memorize these, but really there's no solution uh, other than just to go around chanting, 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 Amy A. Estin, Esmen Esther Asin, bounce on the trampoline, go for a run, whatever it is you do to learn new verbs. Now, here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Where's the mistake? You've spotted it if you've read to the bottom of page 57. The mistake is that there should be a circumflex over the iota, and indeed over the smooth breathing in the second person singular of Amy. This is necessary in some contexts to distinguish A from A, which means if. And it is just about possible to imagine situations in which, at least at first glance, you might not be able to tell which of these words uh, is uh, actually appearing in a particular text, and therefore the circumflex um, uh, is used to distinguish A, meaning you are, from A, meaning if. Now, a couple of other things about this, uh, just to stop you worrying about it too much. The first thing is to remind you, as I've mentioned before, and as Duff mentions right at the start of the book, that uh, when Greek was first, when the Greek New Testament was first written, accents weren't included at all. In some manuscripts, not even all the letters were included, and there were no spaces either. So it can hardly be essential to include the circumflex for the sake of understanding it. That said, you should be aware that it will be there in Greek texts, and certainly if you've got a decent copy of the Greek New Testament, you'll see this with a circumflex on the second singular. So you might as well know what it's there for, and uh, what it means. The other thing to say is, here's a very easy way of remembering which of these two words has the circumflex, because that's what you're really interested in, right? How am I supposed to remember? Something else I've got to remember. Is it the second singular of Amy that has the circumflex, or is it a if? 
that has the circumflex. Here's how to remember it. Very, very simple. Second singular circumflex. What could be more straightforward than that? The second singular of Amy has the circumflex. Second singular, well, squiggle if you like. My kids call it a squiggle. It's technically called a circumflex, but it sounds like an S. And maybe the S sounds will help you remember that that's where it belongs. Not here, here. Okay. That's it. Fairly straightforward, isn't it? Um, so off you go. Go and learn that. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. And once you've got that nailed, we'll come back and look in the next video at section 5.4, where we will use this verb to start predicating uh, adjectives of nouns. We'll be able to write sentences like the woman is wise, the men uh, are grand, foolish, uh, whatever it is you want to say about them. But for now, that'll do. God bless. Uh, take care, and I'll see you next time.